Final regular season game of the year and Syracuse leading six to three after one quarter looking for their 24th straight win and their 25th consecutive victory at home. I would say Massachusetts is a good lacrosse team. They are doing what they have to do. They're not being intimidated. They're staying in it and able to work some couple of impressive offensive plays. Coach Roy Simmons will find out that his team will not have the ball because of that ability to hold on with a man down situation. Now gives UMass the ball without the faceoff. Syracuse leading six to three as we begin the second quarter. Hiller on the feed to Cotignato. Now they're even. McCabe is on him. This is a great matchup. Now McCabe got that one, I guess. Little battle. Crowd loves that defense. They've loved it all year. Lots of little battles going on down there. Here is Hiller. They give him room to the right. Well, I think Hiller might be a little bit right-handed, and they, when he was past the point where he could get a right-handed shot off, they just kind of let him go. Let's see. He's going to come back left, try to behind the back kind of shot. Rob Persing with the short stick was playing him. These are the statistics after one quarter of play. Significant the number of saves by Kellerman of UMass. Syracuse enjoying about a two to one shot advantage. Which has been fairly typical. Oh, intercepted by nice McCabe. Job by McCabe. <laughs> giving it up to Dennis Simmons. Directing traffic, getting it back to McCabe. Oh. He's very clever with those underhands. Just nice job. Hiller came up and he just let him come and then shoveled it over. And it to Todd Winship. To Winship, who now is going to go back on side, and Bernsey's got it, who had a real ankle sprain. Uh, I think a while Eric, back. Eric Holbrook. That was. Holbrook, yep. 43. Was, was misspoken there. Syracuse leaning at 6 to 3. As we said, Burns has been pretty quiet. Paul Gate moving. Left handed high hopper back up by both brother Gary and. Greg Burns. Well, by the way, is the married brother. Yeah. Right now, he and Gary exactly with 47 points. <laughs> so they go to the same classes together. They uh, they do a lot of the same things all the time. Here they are with the same amount of goals. A lot of publicity, Dave. USA Today, all sorts of Sports Illustrated articles. People Magazine. Good Morning America. A couple of fakes and the goal by Gary Gate. <laughs> and his personal scoring drought has come to an end. It was a typical uh, Gary Gate shot. I guess if he had to end the scoreless streak, there it is. Watch Kellerman. Oh, I'm going to go down. Oh, yeah, well, I'm going to take it back up. Oh, you're going up? I'll just take it behind my back. My gracious. What, a, what an exhibition there. Kirk Pratt winning the face and controlling himself with a nice spin and a good duck away from D'Angelo there. Syracuse on top seven to three. We're just two minutes deep into the second quarter. Dave Cohen along a Dale Drypole trip. Oh, Dumpson got a jump coming out of the box. And they find Dumpson and he finds the net. I think Kellerman saw that coming, but he was at a loss to get any help. Well, it was they ran a fake, and the guy who's on him is Matt, no relation to the coach, Garber. And watch what Dumpson does. His 36 was closest to him, but he just really smooth, fluid motion. Didn't have to cock it. And uh, as we said, they might be looking at Dumpson and some of those matchups because they said the speed factor is uh, a little bit significant today. Good ground ball pickup by Gary Gate. Just ran over his man, Paul Gate, feeding. Oh. It. And a nice save in there by Kellerman. Burns in for the rebound. Gary Gate picks up another ground ball. You're not going to knock him off of his feet, are you? He's got three ground balls in this little Look sorting. at that power and balance. Ball knocked away. Egan gets it. Oh. He, he stepped in the crease, didn't he? Yeah, Burns. Was how many ways can I fake thee? <laughs> 
Ah, this is beautiful. Egan gets mugged, but he got the ball off. He saw Burns making the up, down, up, and then he hit him right in the stick. Greg Burns, who is having a great year, guy mentioned is all honorable mention All-American. Eight to three, Syracuse. Moore got jumped or beat there at the midfield line, but Mark yeah, Millen see, there is, he is picked up by nobody, and he gets his second goal of the game. I said they they didn't pick him up, and it looked like he was going to run off, run it off. Moore really couldn't get him, now and they watch they what he does. Four. Now he starts up. Milton said, "Geez, Martin. he thought for sure he was going to be picked up." And you see, Hein had his stick down on the ground, and the ball hopped up over it. Now they're going to be a timeout by Massachusetts again. UMass with a, a goal here. They trail eight to four, and they probably figure they can get a couple of goals over. Be right back in it. So we've got a timeout with 12 minutes. And two seconds to go in the first half, and Syracuse in the lead by a score of eight to four. And here's something that uh, we're excited about coming up from uh, Syracuse University's summer sessions this year the uh, Syracuse Sportscasting Academy. If you've ever thought about trying your hand at uh, play by play, radio, and television, this might be the summer school offering for you. If you need more information, get a brochure. You can call 443-5400. Don't you wish you had that when you were a kid? That's great. Great idea. Roy Simmons shaking his head after that brief team meeting. 12.02, second quarter. Cornell and Cortland State, the only teams ever to win here in the Dome. I was here for both of those. Eight to four right now. UMass like to get back into it. Checking the faceoffs, it's uh, really kind of nine to three in favor of Syracuse. That's um, a disparity that uh, Pennsylvania. Tom Gilmartin enjoyed. was on to take that face off, and he committed a violation. I think that, he kicked it. Yeah, that's going. Cool. You can kick the ball, you can't kick the stick, and that's going to cost him a face off and an opportunity here. Pepe with the ball for UMass. Now Millen has got a pair of goals. Played loosely here by Syracuse. That's more on Milton the last time Milton got by him. Pepe, another little guy out there going back to Millen. Here's Millen making his move. He is only a freshman from Huntington on the north shore of Long Island. Dick Garber, 36 years uh, head coach, but only in the last eight years has he been able to uh, provide partial scholarships to lacrosse players. Here is Millen shooting it high. And indeed, if you run down the UMass roster, there are very few in-state players. I'm wondering how many high schools play. A lot of prep schools in the state, I'm sure. You told me not that England. many. Yeah. I guess that would be less than half. This will be an interesting call. Oh, great effort there by Persing to no avail. Persing not pleased. Good hustle by both guys. That was Kane, Michael Kane. 32 from Massachusetts. Now he gets the ball back. Again played by Persing. Second quarter action here in the Dome. By the way, in case you're wondering, the crease is delineated by the yellow circle around the cage. You may see a red or a dark marking around the crease area as well, but that's that's for soccer. Nice check by Moore. And it rolls into Lee Hines province. And now Matt Moore will run it up. Nice Gets pass. it ahead to McCabe, so the big stick has come across. Pat McCabe, one goal in his career. Giving it up to Jamie Archer who's on down. Yes, Syracuse is using many, many players. Oh, Burns saved that. That was a seven-story pass. Now Bolin and Kramer are on as well. Outside, this is uh, Andrew Bolin. 
Joe Bonacci coming into the picture, Sweet. going through it as a matter of fact. <laughs> Running through your picture as they set up a little settled offense now, take the ball behind. That's Archer. He is the freshman out of Nottingham High School. Andrew Bowler with a couple of fakes back to Ricky Kramer. Nice spin move. Syracuse retains. Shot number 25 at Kellerman. Kramer had a goal earlier. Archer moving up against Gary Wood. Coming oh, back nice against inside Wood. Move. And scoring. J.D. Archer. A little tiny shot. And that's all you need when you're in the right position. But a neat move broke him loose and able to get in and put that goal in. Maybe get a look at it from behind. There you go. Watch Archer. Gary and Woods on him. Got the nine. stick. Push him out. Push him out. There he turns back in. And Woods beat right there. And by protecting the stick, he's able to get the shot off. As I said, not an especially hard shot, Dave, but they don't have to be. Eighth goal of the year for Jamie Archer. Eight goals and 22 shots. Tenacious. Possession again to Syracuse. Bolin. Nice stop on the dime there. He feeds into a crowd. And a nice save down low by Kellerman. Yeah. Made that save against Pratt. Cotignato. Got a fast up break. On the sideline against Stratton. They take away the angle for him to shoot. Nice job by Kramer. Boland Excuse is me, Boland. Yeah, Boland, 25, did a nice job of getting down there and pushing him out. Here's the change as you watch the action in the background, the change in the foreground. Cotignato. Eight thirty-five and counting as we're going to get another shot. Yes, and yeah. a goal by Cotignato. That was an isolation. They cleared out and finally let him go one on one. Yep. And you'll see, I think it was Boland who had picked him up on a fast break and stayed with him. And he just a little short stick and a little ni a nice move by Cotignato. And if you can't get on that stick. You really have trouble if the body position's gone. You can't get the stick. It usually means a goal. Right through the legs that time of Lee High. We have a nine to five game, working man's game. <laughs> nine to five. Syracuse gets the ball on that as they change again. Get the teams get their big sticks in or stick, I should say. That was a late horn, and UMass was protesting the fact they did not get a horn to. Make the substitution. They finally did. Now Paul Gate will begin the play. <laughs> Using the high pick set by Gary. That was a behind the back and for Gary and the pick and roll. Up ahead, Gary Wood bothered by Dumpson. Drop by Rodney, but he does a good job to keep it. Marker down, delayed call, and now they'll stop the play, and Syracuse will be penalized. We'll give him a push on a technical. 30 seconds. It'll be on Dumpson, I think. Number six. Yep. Watch Dumpson. There's that check, and just did impeded his progress, and then just kind of pushed him a bit from behind. Good call. I mean, if you're in Massachusetts, but it was a good call also by the referee. So another man up opportunity. Third, and they have yet to convert one. UMass right now down by four goals. It's off of somebody's stick. There's a look at the box as Dennis Simmons checks in. Back to the attack half. Cotignato is going to take it. Oh, they gave him an avenue. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a quick stick, Dave, when he sees that lane open up and he wants the ball back. He says, I'm going to do this again. Oh, nice feed nice to the stick. crease intended for Sudan who tried to one time it. Nice save. Good idea. They knock it away from Stratton. Sudan will shield. 
the they're ball all, from Syracuse. They're all even now. So everybody's now got to pick somebody up. Syracuse. As uh, UMass is going to take a little while to get some people in. Now they're in. Hiller played by Person. Seven minutes to go in the half. Very deliberate offense now. Hiller taking his time from behind. Pursing on him. Tried to quick stick it, but had to go too high in the air. And now Pursing's got it clear. That was Rich Senator who missed the opportunity, and Pursing is being bothered by Hiller. Finally, he gives it up. Got some help back there, Holbrook. Now he's in a little bit of trouble with that big stick. He's got a little more room to operate, but don't want to hang it out. He bounces it to Brooke Chase. Chase will kill some time to allow uh, Holbrook to get back across. Brooke Chase picked up the slack in that Pennsylvania game offensively. He ended up with four goals. Rodney Dumpson coming onto the field now. Persing has exited. There's Dumpson into your picture. There's a couple of fakes by Gary. Finding Dumpson. Gate signals for Rodney to go through. Make his move. Thought about coming back with a right-handed shot. Now Gary gets it from Paul and they send behind. Archer. Nice bounce shot. Beautifully done there by number two. That's Brooke Chase. Boy, he had to place that perfectly. It wasn't a very hard shot. Yep. Going to get the there pops out a little bit. Now they're trying to get stick on stick with him, and he gets it off before they can. He goes the opposite side, offside. You, know, you don't usually see a bounce shot where you bounce it so close to where you're standing yep. and play that long bounce. A long bounce. That's what made that very impressive. Again, Gil Martin on the faceoff. Syracuse has doubled UMass at 10 to 5. Nice pick in midair by Paul Gate. He just stole that ball out of midair. Oh, they worked the ball quickly. It goes back to Paul. Don't close your eyes now. You may miss something. And there's Jamie Archer sneaking in the back door. Now, you come to scout Syracuse and you look at a guy like Brooke Chase who pours in four against Pennsylvania, you say, geez, where'd this guy come from? And then you look at guys like Jamie Archer who does a, such a nice job of getting the ball on this play as Paul Gate down, loses it. Now, Archer is going to be the recipient of a cross cage feed from Burns. Oh, I'm sorry, Marachek takes a behind the backer. Now it's going to go across and watch what Archer does. He sees him stay out with Marachek. He watched Wood stay with Marachek, and he just took a short little hop. As we come back off the face, Gary to Burns. Syracuse keeps it, 11 to 5. These are the kind of rushes, Dave, that they can, you know, so many shots, so much pressure. Punches and bunches. Yep, punches and bunches. There's another one. Off the stick of Kellerman, but. Yep. Yeah, he gets credit. What about the man who was behind? Well, there wasn't any. Actually, it was Egan was more on the wing than directly behind, and Kellerman did a nice thing to get out there. Now, uh, UMass may catch Syracuse shorthanded if they hustle up field. Pepe on the move. Shots Syracuse almost a two to one margin. It took about four in that last flurry. Ball down now. Oh, yeah. McCabe comes away with sure. it. Sure. He draws the folks to him and then he outlets it. And Syracuse has two men running unimpeded up the sideline. Dave, I think one thing we've noticed with Matt Palem out is the really the fact that he always used to play so much a part in the clears. Even if uh, he didn't make the stop, uh, he was always there to use him. I, I don't think they want to put that kind of pressure on Lee Hine. Burns gets it back after he missed the initial pass. Egan. Bonacci and Kramer are coming on now. Kehi with it. Down to four minutes in the half. There's Joe Bonacci. Goes back to the left hand, switches right. Coming back left. Kehi. Marachek. And Egan. 
Lost the angle. Vern smart. Didn't take a shot. It would have been a wasted shot. He did not have the angle. Gave it back. Syracuse retains control. And they're showing a patient offense. There's Marichek. He's not so patient sometimes. <laughs> no, I mean, he, uh, he loves to deal on people. It's... And now Kramer. This is about the longest Syracuse has gone all year. And the half field offense without uncorking a shot. It's nice to see once in a while. <laughs> Kanachi, they cleared out for him. Oh, nice defense. Really, just to get a stick up on him was Millen. I think, was it three? I'm checking, yeah. Bonacci couldn't get a full force of that shot. <laughs> There's a kind of a double pump. Ricky Kramer to the cutter for the rifle shot. That was Greg Burns. Playing much stronger this year. Yep. He had a great game against Cornell. He's been really hot. That was a game in which he sprained his ankle, sat out a good portion of the second quarter, but still came back. Got it was, out. Uh, was a real factor in that third quarter, and he's still been hobbled by the sprain since. So Bonacci, the whirling <laughs> dervish, giving it up. Oh, oh Pipe City. Burns didn't know where the ball was. Did Burns nice gets job it of back. playing body position. He got the crossbar from the other side, and this time UMass has it. And they outlet it. <laughs> Pepe now racing on Kramer. Let's see whether Hines uh, make sure he didn't get uh, lulled to sleep there. Down to 210 in the half. As they're going to change some people. The ball is played from behind by Cotignato. Oh, nice and move. He scores. Nice he move. He is a scorer, Rob Cotignato. Second goal of the first half. 11 to 6 Syracuse with 156 to play. You know what he did there so well was when he had the shot, when the stick wasn't on his stick, Winship was guarding him. He took it, oh, and he didn't have to cock it, and went by Syracuse goalie and John Hine. Lee Hine, I said John Hine, Lee Hine. There's Paul Gate running between two men, blindsided oh, from behind. Dragged the nice stick. job on the play there by Joe Flynn. But Paul gets it back and gives it up to Pratt filling the middle. Soft shot. Kellerman may have been faked out by that change of pace, <laughs> but he made the save, and here he gets it upfield now. Where Kenny Rendazzo has it. First action for Rendazzo. Another Long Island player, junior from North Merrick. Sudan goes to the shot and Lee Hine playing at ankle high. Minute 15 to go. Syracuse oh, 11. Buddy pass. UMass 6. Call that a buddy pass. Here, buddy, here it comes, and then you get clobbered. Persing gives it up. Gary Gate will draw the crowd and then accelerate. Down to a minute. Just. He had a timeout call before that. Yep. Check. 58 seconds to go, and the Orange have taken a timeout. Leading it 11 to 6, while on their way to another 20 goal game. You know, one of the interesting things in talking to some of the Syracuse coaches and players, they say, look, we want to get Matt Palin back in the game. Uh, we're going to need him for the playoffs, obviously. He's rusty. We don't want to get him put in a position where we put him in the third quarter, and if they get some goal scrum, he loses confidence. So it'll be interesting to see whether he sees any time. There's that buddy pass we talked about. Well, watch what. He has to do really extend the body way up, and of course this is a, a legal, a legal hit. And McCabe really takes a, a shot from Hiller. Yeah, in football they talk about the guys willing to go over the middle. Yep. In lacrosse, they're all willing. Yeah, that's true. Coming up at halftime, our Coors halftime highlights. Always worthwhile sticking around for them in case you joined us along the way. You may have missed some spectacular goal making. That's right. I see Matt Palum out there walking around. I'm sure he'd like to get in and get some time, but as I said, being rusty, they don't want to go in and have him lose some confidence. Then Dave going to playoffs saying, geez, uh, I, I don't remember that last game I had. I didn't do so well. So we'll see. I, I still think he's favoring the knee a little bit. He did have arthroscopic surgery on it. Yep. But they have a lot of confidence in Lee Hine, but obviously this guy was number one. 
And being the competitor that he is and the kid that he is, I'm sure he'd like to get back there as soon as possible. Well, at any rate, 58 seconds left. First half, Syracuse get the ball. Marichek's going to take it. Oh. And Paul Gates sends a rifle, a howitzer, right through two people. But, you know, they had uh, they had another person there with them. I, I, I think it was... 22 it says Suris like they knew it was going to happen and they said we're going to put two people here and that's right off of Suris's stick and I think Suris may be a goalie he's got the same kind of so they had two goalies in there Suris is the backup goalie so they put two goalies in you can do that 12 to 6 is the score you know, you can I put three or four guys in there if you want to. They had the right uh, setup there. <laughs> yeah. They were trying to stop a 357 Magnum. Here comes Paul again, giving it up to Gary. Or make it Burns. Yeah, it was Burns. Took a hard left-handed shot. Lots of time left in a lacrosse game, 33 seconds. Half a minute as Egan gives it up. Here comes Gary Gate. Knocked to his feet. This play by Paul. I thought Gary was thinking about going air gate that time. Here he is backing down, faking. Got the pipe. Gary playing with a little bit of hard luck here. Yeah. Now 10 seconds to go. Paul Gate knocks the ball free. They're complete lacrosse players. Four seconds. No further scoring. McAlevey was in pursuit, but that is the end of the first half. Here in the Carrier Dome as undefeated Syracuse takes a 12-6 lead to the locker room. We'll be back with our Coors Halftime Highlights after these words. And we are back in the Carrier Dome at the half. Syracuse leading the University of Massachusetts 12-6. Dave Cohen along with Dale Drypulcher and uh, the UMass Minutemen who are essentially a run and gun team have been able to slow it down on occasion not throughout but they've done a very good job offensively even though they trail by a 12 to 6 score. Uh, I think they've surprised the people at how well they've played. I like to call that being patient. You're right. They have been patient. They've taken some good shots. Uh, I think we'll see a good second half. I'm not sure exactly what they can do differently but uh you know, they've had some, uh, they've had some, uh, they've been outshot, let's put it this way, two to one. That's what they have to change. Lee Hine has been in the nets again for Syracuse. Matt Palum did not see any action yet. We think Syracuse may want to let him play some in the second half, depending on the way this game is going. Let's take a look now at the Coors halftime highlights and check out some of the outstanding plays in the first half, both defensively and in terms of a goal scoring. Here is Massachusetts Mullins. trying to clear the ball from their own end of the field. Mullins got it way up, and then it was just a ground ball. Then a behind-the-back pass, and Cotignato, number nine, took it. Ball went way up high. It's Pat McCabe, who had the stick on stick right down low and took away a potential goal. And Paul Gate scoring a goal against two goalies who were used simultaneously, only one using the goalie stick. Off a break play, that's right. You can have the... As many people in you want, only one goalie stick. Feet across, Marichek does it behind the back. It's deflected out. Paul Gate looks behind and sees the freshman, Jamie Archer. He sees an opening and takes a little tiny shot. And they all count. And here's Rob uh, Cotignato, the outstanding goal scorer for the University of Massachusetts. All he needs is a seam. And he watch, he doesn't, he just gets very smooth and he got right between Hines' legs. So uh, UMass has looked good offensively. They just haven't had enough answers to stop Syracuse uh, on defense, especially early on when Syracuse had virtually uncontested runs at the cage. And you can see Syracuse exactly as a two-to-one shot advantage. And that has been a factor here in the first half. We'll be back for the second half right after these words. Just underway here in the second half. Syracuse leading 12 to 6. Dave Cohen and Dale Drypulcher with you from Super Sports and the Carrier Dome. The orange are in white and they're in the lead and they have possession and it's Jim Egan. You can see about those statistics the 
38 to 19 in the shot department. If you can control the faceoffs against Syracuse and slow the game down like Pennsylvania did, I guess that's the way to beat them. But they've been not getting the faceoffs today, and, and Syracuse is up by six. And incidentally, we had the goalie question answered, Dave, as Egan gets the ball out on top as Matt Palin is starting the second half. It's Paul Gate who has three goals in this game. Sending now to Greg Burns. This is Matt Palum's first action since uh, the Hobart game. Yeah. We saw him limping at Cornell. We knew he was never going to make that one. Gary giving to Paul. Kind of a controlled offense by Syracuse. Pop out play. Dumpson popped out, deflected on his shot. Hit one of the people in the crowd, one of the screeners. And here comes Syracuse again. They feed the crease. And it's gathered in by oh, Kellerman. He loses it, it and it's shoved nearly into the open cage. On the ground, Gary Wood run at by Burns. Paulgate is going to try to get him from behind. He was unsuccessful. A nice lead pass, but it's not handled down low. Now UMass with a shot. Matt Palin down for the save. And Palin on the outlet to Gary Gay. This is what Matt does so well. Crowd coming to life. Gary Gate racing it into the box. Ball knocked out of his stick. Egan on the save. <laughs> Ball still down now. Nice job by Egan. He didn't know exactly who was back there. but Sudan losing it to Dumpson who can't shovel it ahead in the direction of Burns. Sudan gets it back, comes out of the crowd with it. Nice job, Tim Sudan. Nice pass. And nice pass. And they worked the ball well. In close, behind save. the back, Matt Palin with a big save. And the crowd appreciating Matt's getting right into the thick of things. McCabe giving round in his own end. Up he goes to Paul Gate. He's got operating room at midfield. Dan Cahey is coming on. Egan wants the ball behind. Cahey gets it. Nobody picked him up. Dan Cahey makes the net dance. And Kellerman is furious. Well, he, he probably has the right to be. He has a tough enough job without letting guys Sir, come in like this. There was nobody on him. Cronin slid out number 20, but I'm not sure that at that time he was who should have had him. I think it probably should have been a midfielder that had him. Dan Cahey getting the goal for Syracuse. And the Orangemen look to tack another one on quickly as Burns rotates it, looks for the return and gets. Kirk Pratt, the faceoff man, is still on. Now he's heading off. Andy Bolin is low posting in front of the cage. Here's Cahey. He's got those strong legs. He can plant, come back in the other direction. Oh. Back to back, Dan Cahey. And Dan Cahey. And it's 14 to 6. Cahey busting it open here in the second half as he very powerful takes a left-handed high shot right up over the stick side of Kellerman and Cahey got two goals. Well, I don't know what the time was and that couldn't have been a whole lot of difference. Six foot 200 pounder. Yep. Powerful. Gilmartin out to take the face now for Syracuse. Tom Gilmartin. New face off man there for the uh, Minutemen of Massachusetts. That was Joe Flynn. There's a guy from Pennsylvania named Flynn who used to be quite a face off man. Yeah, the football player. Yeah, Remember that's him? right. Remember him? Yeah. So it's a eight goal Syracuse lead. Matt Palum, it seems to me, he kind of limps when he's out of that cage. But I'll tell you, he's made two impressive saves. Backing down is Cotignato on the feed. And there is Palum in the crowd picking up another loose ball. That's Andy Bolin rushing it down. That's a tough pass to make. Look at Burns on the give there to, who is that, Marichek? Over the head of Kramer. <laughs> nice look by Tommy, but uh, Kramer was in a little too close. And that pass was a high one. 
You know, did you ever have a knee injury? Sometimes it's almost psychological. You know, you've been used to limping for two weeks or so, and you, you, you don't know whether it's really necessary sometimes. The answer to your question is yes. Yes, right. And you do. You forget how to run. Or how to run properly. Simmons on Millen. Little guy scored twice oh, earlier. Body save. Halem with a save. Couldn't find the rebound. Is he going to come out now? He'll stay I don't at think home. So. I think you'll find him uh, right in there. Now they move it up to midfield quickly. Dennis Simmons looking to give it up and head off. Rob Percy, short stick. He gives it up. Dumpson is coming on. Maritek may kill some time until Paul Gates steps out of the field. Or not. <laughs> yeah, or not. A couple of saves in there. Kellerman. He did it bothered again. by Maritek on the outlet. You know, he may step back. He's got gold crease privileges. There's an invi invisible cylinder that goes up there. The glove came right off Jim yeah. Egan. He's not taking, he's getting that stick and passing it way out, and they're able to get the ball. Cotignato with a hesitation. And there's Palem down to stop another. He must have five saves here in the first six minutes. He got four for him anyway. I might have given him one. <laughs> one extra. Four official saves. Ball gate has come on. Gary will follow. Let's see if Burn spots one of them. He sends it to Paul. Syracuse getting spacing offensively. Gary is protesting about being held outside. A flag is down. Now let's see what the call is. Gary was saying something to the official. And he did get the call. At least Syracuse Gilly, got the call. There's the check they had to make. There's a very, very slight lip. I think it's a gimp. Yeah, well, I, I think it's one of those things where he's just starting to remember how to how to do things again. That's that right knee. So Syracuse man up. And this Rifle across for Dumpson. Look out on that shot. Boy, what velocity on that. This is only Syracuse's second man up. Opportunity. They have one. Dumps in again. Paul Gate. Gary. Egan. Oh. Marichek. Did that look easy, didn't they? Extra man. Marichek's probably smiling. He's saying, that's the first time we have to go behind my back. <laughs> that's right. Just pops it behind. Now, Egan's got a clear field of vision, and and they didn't slide over, and Egan made a nice pass. Nice man down goal, man up goal, I should say, for Syracuse. Two assists for Marichek, that's his first goal. 15 6, 8 27 left, third quarter. Good battle on this faceoff, but UMass comes away with it, Sudan. The minute men. Huh. Not enjoying much success here in the third quarter. Cape took it right away midair. Andy Bolin racing it down. Egan plays the short hop, keeps it inbounds with a great individual effort. And there's Kay. He's got two goals here in the third. Joe Bonacci on that. Nice change of direction by Joe. Knocked away from him. Andy Bolin tried to use his body, but the ground ball was picked up by UMass's Cronin. Corey Cronin. Yep. With a big stick. Miller down to two knees to play that. Midway through the third quarter, it's 15 to 6. <laughs> Bonacci kind of checking out the action there, and Bergen almost made a move. 
There's Jamie Bergen from Camillus. Like to score in the dome. Doesn't get the chance there. Palin gets a rebound, which is right for the open net for a moment. Look at the look at the shot that he made, the pass he made. Super. Burns picking up the loose ball. Burns looking deep downfield. That was intended. McCabe. Mullins hit McCabe. McCabe went down and got back up. Hard to tell, but I think Pat was smiling there <laughs> through the mouthpiece. Yeah. So that's when you know you're in trouble, I think. Sudan, very good faker with the ball, moving on Simmons. A couple of nice changes of direction. Dan Lannon in 48. Mike. Kane. Now Bergen. Bergen gets it back. No, it's Hiller with it now. Number seven. Beats the defense. Shot is wide. Matt Palin and the Nets here in the third quarter is not allowed to score yet. Nope. Somebody in the crease there. That'll be a Syracuse possession. Would you call this a confidence builder? I would say yes. I would say that starting him like that was probably the best thing. You pumped up, come out of that locker room. You know you've got to maintain your lead, and uh, I think they feel they want to give him some confidence too. Uh, poor, uh, poor pass, what I meant to say there. Todd Ignato is bumped a couple of times by uh, Paul Gate. Nice movement. Save. Terrific save by Palin. Now he may have missed four games, but he's certainly looking like uh, he's right in stride here in this final game of the regular season. Gary Gate handling the ball at midfield as Palem happy about his play. Gate goes to the right hand. That shot is high. I think Gary looks a little bit frustrated. Dumps it. Faking with the right, going left, coming back right. Stick on stick. Feinberg got a stick on him, number six. He burned Feinberg early. Now Feinberg's got the ball offensively. Oh, nice. Long, though. Fine. Nice There's job. Gary, Jamie, Jamie Archer. Archer. Burns is to his right. He goes that way. Dumps it, cuts to the crease. Dumps it as Outside. his stick knocked out of his hands. But we had a flag down prior to that. So Syracuse be man up. 30 second technical on UMass offside. Burns gets the ball over. There's a hack right there. And the ball went up way up in the air. But they were offside. Syracuse will now be man up for 30 seconds. Syracuse is two for two on man up. Ball to Gary Gate. Egan got it back to Marichek. How he ever found him there, I don't know. Still Syracuse ball. Let's see what they do with Dumpson. Dumpson's going to bring the ball in. Now, don't forget they're man down. They can't go man on man on him. And he's got such good speed. Now, nope, they're going to let him. He's going to pass it off. Another even. Marichek behind the back and Egan missing. Nice look. Nice look by Marichek. Say, do you suppose if you're uh, eating dinner with uh, Tom Marichek and you ask him to pass something, he goes behind the back? Or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pass the potatoes. Pass the gravy. Syracuse getting uh, some new faces in the game now. Gonzalez uh, was the intended recipient of that pass. That one. Mike Doyle has come in, number 23. Mike right. Doyle. He's a freshman out of West Tennessee. 426 left in the third quarter. A nine goal lead for Syracuse. Update you, uh, Matt Palin started this third quarter after Lee Hine, and now he's going to get the ball. Palin way out of the cage Whoa. at midfield. Here's McCabe. Will he make a move? He ducked under an official timeout. 
What it was about, I don't know. One official talking to the other saying, I blew the whistle. I don't know. The ball should have been in a different spot. And see, in lacrosse, they can correct that stuff. Of course, you don't see the players protesting. They probably don't even know what's going on. Right? <laughs> Think about the fans. Fortunately, this is a game that is a player's game. Yeah. Not, not really overcoached, certainly not over officiated in most instances. That's one of the reasons why they cut down the number of big sticks was they thought it put a lot of coaching in. There was timeouts all the time and get this guy in with this stick and this and it, it became a real numbers game and they felt that they were going to give it back to the players. Jamie oh. Archer, he had a pair of goals in the first half, reverses his field, got the pipe. Bonacci plays the rebound. Bonacci steps through, goes to the left and scores. And it'll be a slash, I think. Nice move by Bonacci. There's a move, there's the poke check, but he beats him. There's the slash. Ooh, that might have hurt. Have an aluminum burn on his neck, and he follows up after having that aluminum bounced off his neck with a goal. So the kid from Fanville Manlius out of the Naval Academy, now at Syracuse, gets a goal. I don't know if Kellerman is uh, angry at the absence of his close defense or just mad at himself. He's not a happy camper well, right now. He couldn't ask for much more. I mean, I, I guess better body position, but normally if you take a six-foot piece of aluminum on the neck, it stops you, but Bonacci just went and got it. Pratt back on the faceoff for Syracuse, loses it momentarily. That's He's holding Flynn. the ball from play, isn't he? Let's see what he says. Oh, the crowd thought so. Those who could see Joe Flynn looked like he was just holding the ball down. Let's see. So Flynn's down. Now the ball is not. Uh, he didn't withhold it. Yeah, I don't know what the call was. Three and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. Last game of the regular season. The Orange will undoubtedly have another home game. Yeah, they'll get a bye the, the first NCAA round. Playoffs. Buy the first round and have a game here. Sudan against Patain with the big stick. Smyrony's this issue, Dave. John Hopkins waiting to see whether they're going to get a bid. They beat Towson State, who had a good record. And uh, so now they're on the kind of the cusp of the thing. It'll be interesting to see. I'm sure they probably will. Another save. Oh, big one by Matt Palin. Sudan is down and slow to get up. He's played a heck of a game. Yes, he has. He's limping. Palem is out of the cage. You don't see much uh, animation from Roy Simmons on the sideline. I wonder what he's thinking when he sees Matt wander out. Yeah, I was going to say, if he comes out too far, tries to go down across midfield, you'll see some animation. Maracek, oh. a whirling dervish. Somebody comes free. Oh! In the goal. Between his legs, how'd he do that? Gary, and that was the treat they've been waiting for. Slow it down, guys. Now that's Paul with the ball. Now Gary's beat the defenseman, fell down. Now that's Gary up in the air, fully extended, comes back down. A one hopper between his legs. <laughs> they love it. If you weren't here at the beginning, they played the Canadian National Anthem in tribute to Marichek and the Brothers Gate. And look who's got it. Paul Gate behind his back to Burns. And a nice save by Kellerman. Nice save by Kellerman. Oh, and Gary's now down. Gary. Little bit high. Intended for Marichek. You know, every time you get a goal like that, all the fans in the lower stands <laughs> turn around and try to catch the replay on the monitors here in the press boxes in the dome. We're delighted we're able to show you these games in their entirety on the big screens that you have at home. <laughs> that 
that one should make the uh, season ending yeah. highlight reel. Nice save. Matt Palin has been perfect. And another. Don't go out, Matt. <laughs> He's pumped. There's the save, ball down, and he's going after the rebound. Nice pass. Down to a minute and a half to go in this third quarter. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they take Matt out after this quarter. I, I think I would. 17 to 6. Bonacci. You know. Egan's in there battling, isn't he? Oh, yeah. he always. That's why he's one of the tri-captains. Somebody stepped in. That's why he's one of the tri-captains. He's always there. Marichek uh, getting into it there with Cronin. That's the extent of it in lacrosse. I mean, it doesn't usually get beyond that point. Generally, I guess. A little fight in the pen game, but... You're right. For all the body contact, to go. for all the body contact, you really don't see a lot of fights or actually even any real dirty play. Fortunately, you don't see too many injuries either. For all the contact. Now, one of the thing about Palin's injury is, boy, you certainly didn't want to go in the playoffs with only one goalie, and that's what they were looking at. Kushner working here. Palin looking to pitch a shutout here in this third quarter. He's 45 seconds away. And they've. Uh, well, check the shots they took on him. They took what? Uh, one, two, three, 20 to seven shots. Now down to 35 seconds. This would be a storybook return for Matt. Now with 25 seconds. There is the gallop by Stratton. The gift to Burns. Marichek. The usual behind the back. The defenseman has it. Gives it up in a crowd to Marichak with 10. Runs into his own man. Bonacci's coming on. The feed to Egan. The one hander. And that shot is just wide. Spectacular <laughs> end to the third quarter. And at the end of the third quarter, And as we've completed three quarters here in the Dome, you check out this action. Seventeen to six after three. Now we get set for the fourth quarter, and Matt Palin will remain in the cage for Syracuse. The woman in the middle of your picture there with the S is Mrs. Roy Simmons. Quite a fan. This looks like Carly Simon. Right now, this looks like Syracuse's game with 17 to 6, 15 minutes left to go. Off the face that is uh, won by Kirk Pratt. He is the man who picks it up. Now he leaves it for Gary Gate. He's got two goals, and Gary has seen his uh, scoring leadership. We take it over by his brother Paul for the season. Jamie Archer has a pair of goals. Brooke Chase has saved the day down at Penn. Oh. Nice check by Mullins. Mullins has it now. Chase it's after him. Chase Chasing. on the chase. Yeah. Oh, intercepted by Dumpson. Rodney Dumpson, fortunately, knocked it on the ground. And Nick Boyd. Nick has a banner here in the uh, Carrier Dome. It's Jamie Archer scores. Third goal of the game for young Jamie. Kellerman slammed the ball off the turf. Got a warning from one of the officials. Yeah, Boynton started it all, and then he took him on the offside. Kellerman coming in. Third goal of the game for number Had a pretty good save percentage. Third score, and 
Syracuse, Syracuse up to 53 shots. That's uh, that's one of the problems. And faceoffs about 13 to. Joe Martin was not going to be denied, was he? Intended outside there for Ricky Kramer. Jamie Archer with three goals as new personal best. And Dick Garber is the man who made that stop on the sideline. I'm well, just checking faceoffs officially now 20 to 7 in favor of Syracuse, and that that does present a problem when you're giving them the ball that many times and they get off so many shots and quality shots it's it's tough Kellerman's played pretty well Todd Ignato was held in check as was the whole team oh, in the third quarter pipe. when you're good it helps to be lucky too yeah. crossbar helping Palin stay perfect in this game He's played 16 and a half minutes and is not allowed to score McAleve, you really haven't mentioned his name too much after the early going. Oh, save! Who was that? McCain in there made that save? Palin made the first save. Oh. And they finally get one by him. Well, I tell you, he's made some spectacular ones, and that is Cotignato's goal. He's going to go down and shake hands with Palem. There it is, right there. He got the stick on it. Couldn't control it, lost it. There's the behind the back shot by McAlevey, and then Cotignato got it again. UMass goal scored Just by number nine. <laughs> third in a row. Rob you know, we didn't show. <laughs> Cotignato went down and shook hands with Matt Palem after that. Back we come with an 18 to 7 lead. Good hustle by Boland. Boland out of JD. Here's Brooke Chase getting oh. it head high but scoring nevertheless. He almost scored that without benefit of a head on his shoulders. Yeah, that's right. A headless attackman. Two goals and one assist for Chase. Syracuse comes right back to make it 19 on a goal by number two, Brooke Chase. And so Syracuse knocking on the door now of another 20 goal game. 12 50 in the fourth quarter. Syracuse averaging 20.7 goals per game. I think they'll surpass that today. <laughs> Face off, interesting. The brothers Gate in pursuit along with Kushner who comes away with it. Nice job by Kushner. Now Joe Flynn. Todd Ignato. Great individual effort by McAlevey. Hold. Oh, they got him with a slash. I thought it might be a hold. Caught him with a slash. That'll be a minute, so another man up opportunity. Fourth for Mass. They have yet to convert. Syracuse, one minute slashing. Called on number 29, Pat McKay. One minute slashing, Syracuse record. So, McCabe down. There's the 8 7 7 7. 19 to 7, Syracuse leading. Who's got it? Holbrook. Holbrook. Yeah, oh. Intercepted, Intercepted, however, in midfield. Fast break. Winship trying to get back in position. That shot goes into the lower stands on the fly. At the end of the game, we'll select our Pepsi player of the game. A lot of candidates as usual. Jim Egan has uh, piled up a number of assists in this game. Jamie Archer with his career high with three goals. Got Egan with four assists. Paul Gate is three goals and two assists. Nice takedown there. Sudan. Upending Strat. Matt Palin scooping up the loose ball. Yay. Will draw the pressure and uh, give it up. 
Now here comes Paul. The defense retreats. Wouldn't you? <laughs> One hand. I think that pushes him to the head of the list of candidates <laughs> for the Pepsi player of the game. One handed shot. And Syracuse's 20th goal. At the degree of difficulty, a six. Or number 19. Power rating, very high. <laughs> Whoa, eight we get from the truck. <laughs> That'll be a timeout. Paul Gay, fourth goal, second assist, or two assists, I should say. And Syracuse leads it now, Dale, 20 to 7. So the Orange men hitting their per game average, and we still have 11 16 to go in this one. You know, it hasn't been uh, as much of a frantic pace, believe it or not. A lot of scoring day, but we have seen them up and down, up and down, up and down. You don't have a chance to catch your breath, and Syracuse has been able to do it in some settled situations. They've had two man up goals. There's the average score, 20.7, 9.3. And in that third quarter, UMass did not score against Matt Palin. Did you happen to read one of the blurbs we got from the SIDs office said that prior to this game anyway, Syracuse's attendance in lacrosse was averaging what 23rd or 24th uh, best it would have been in basketball season. It was, it was higher than Georgetown at basketball. That's right, yeah. Spectacular uh, sport here in Syracuse, and the fans love it. There's a hat that kind of shows you what these people feel about lacrosse. 18,000 there for the, uh, when we had the football spring game, over 18,000. There's Gil Martin on the face. He's a, he's a load to bring down, isn't he? Nick Boynton feeding to the off wing, and Jamie Archer's shot is saved by Kellerman. Kellerman has played fairly well. well he's got 19 saves. He hasn't got much support defensively. Well, plus they take a lot of those goals are really almost unstoppable. John Gonzalez, number 12, got it. Cut toward the crease, but didn't get it back. Here's a nice cut by Kushner. And it's taken away now by Winship. Gives it up just in time. Uh, hard to pass with that big stick. Gave it to Stratton. Return to Kramer. A little bit yes. high and in. Passing by Syracuse for the 21st goal. Good hustle by Ricky Kramer. There they just got rid of that ball in time. And then it was Stratton who got it up ahead. And then it was Burns looking for Kramer. And Kramer, yep. The Syracuse goal, number 13, Ricky Kramer, the assist to number four. Patrick has to break the plane. Doesn't have to stay in. Matt Ryder got the assist. Now on is Paul Cannon. Great name. For a shot, Cannon yeah, of a loads shot. Of Cannon of a shot, right? John Barr is on as well. Boy, look at Kellerman still hustling there. That kid is... Uh, had over, well, just about, I said, I was going to say about 60. It's 59 as I check it. 59 shots taken at him. He's only a junior at him at Hassett. Jason McCourney's on. This is Nick Boynt. The banner here for Nick says, use Nick's quick stick, number 17. That's John Barr, 32. Procedure. I didn't catch exactly what it was. Was that that new time rule about advancing the ball? I, did, I, I didn't think so. There were a lot of people around. I don't know, maybe no, it would have given us the ward signal, so it may have been. Too many big sticks. Cannon losing it. Cannon getting it back. Picorni. Return to Cannon. The ball boy was on the field. Yeah. Man. Safety first. Good call. Jim O'Hara. Oh, 
Nine and a half to go. Jamie Archer already with a career high of three goals. Nice lead. But Courtney couldn't find the spot. Hard to tear to take a right-handed shot. Not a lot of room. Boynton gambling didn't get it. Massachusetts has only one goal in the entire second half. We've got nine minutes left. Pepe with the ball now, number 19. Francis Pepe, junior from Oceanside. Might be more New Yorkers on the uh, UMass team than Syracuse. Millen sneaking in. Oh, and lost it. <laughs> Fans trying to tell him that Millen was chasing him. But Courtney got rid of the ball, but it went out of bounds, and UMass will clear. Nick Boynton, by the way, is out of Concord, Mass. He's a junior. DuBurn Reed is out of Boston. They're the only uh, Massachusetts players on the Syracuse roster. Millen, a nice job tiptoeing down uh, the sideline. For not, a yep. Nice try, but he tried to get the ball back in, couldn't get out of his stick, went out of bounds. Bill Tully is coming on now. He replaces a John Winship. 6'4, 240. I love those big defenses. Van Riker, Van Riker, please report to the management office. Van Riker, go to the management office, please. Dan Kay had a couple of goals back to back in the first half. Gil Martin with a quick feet. Good upper body strength. Outside of the, the net. Outside of the net. Kellerman, nice outlet. Upfield in a hurry from Mario Lopez. It's from Amherst. Hometown product. Cadignato backed off as if he wanted to go one and one. McAlevey. I don't know if he's even attempted a shot in the game. Nice roll. Spin move on McCabe who gets back. Intercepted by Bell. That one from behind. Tully now with a gallop. A little bit behind Stratton. Nice job How by those Todd guys Stratton. Amazing, you know, that they can, can do that with those big sticks. There comes Cahey. Nick Boynton was thinking about trying to... Uh, Good check in there. <laughs> Stratton. Not a... And McCabe gets it up to Gil Martin. Johnny Goodwin plays it. Goodwin gets it back to Gil Martin. He's got room for a shot. We're going to have a timeout taken by Massachusetts with 6.51 remaining. Syracuse looking for their 25th consecutive home victory in lacrosse. There's Coach Garver. This will possibly be, oh, if they don't make the playoffs, his last game. He's got, as we said, 300 victories. I would think he would get his team into the playoffs with a record yeah. of 10 and 4. So, you know, it's kind of like basketball only in a, in a mini configuration somebody always is on that that bubble where they're never sure that they're and they, they really do look at uh, strength of competition which I'm sure Massachusetts is right up there you look at the Ivy League this year David's been very very competitive with Yale Brown Cornell uh, pulling an upset matter of fact all three of the losses by Massachusetts this year have come at the hands of the Ivy League Cornell Yale and Harvard well, Paul Gate on the day with six points says taking over the team scoring leadership. That's Paul number 19. Gary had held it. <laughs> There's Marichek, the other Canadian. Brooke, Brooke Chase. Chase. Yep. Dan Cahey, number 30. Did you notice in the pregame when they played the Canadian national anthem how Paul and Gary were singing right along That's there? That's right. Because they'll represent their country this year in uh, the World Games. 
World Championships in Australia. And so this is not Sergis's first appearance in the game, Dave. Number 22, the goalie. He was in before on that inbounds play. He was right in there with Kellerman. Six and a half to go. Here's Matt Ryder. Andy Kuchia is on as well, number five. Concert pianist John Goodwin, number three. He's got the ball. 38 for Syracuse is Todd Coleman. Kuchia in pursuit. Did you happen to read that article about uh, John Goodwin and his uh, professor of piano? I saw it, yes. It was it was interesting. They've done a number of articles about it because he's an interesting lacrosse player. But the uh, professor came down pretty hard on him, according to that article. But I'll tell you what, the experiences of playing on a two-time, maybe three-time national championship team, I mean, how could you ever replace that? Well, I suppose you worry about getting your fingers mashed and then trying to hit middle C, I guess. <laughs> Broken digit. Right now they couldn't tell uh, who the ball was off, so they faced it off. <laughs> they still don't know who's going to get it. And look who's got it. Yep. Syracuse. Chris Robinson, 37. <laughs> big Bill Tully. Yep. Andy Puccia fires. Offside now, going to cost him 30. Massachusetts should be down for 30. I think some of the high points of this game, a lot of offense to talk about, but perhaps most gratifying to the staff, Coach Simmons, is that uh, Matt Palem has looked every bit as effective as he was before he injured his knee. In fact, I think he, he really looked hot today. So as we wind down here, 537, they get people in. Syracuse will be a man up. They're fourth. They've got three. Andy Puccia Two. gets the goal three for now. Syracuse. And it's 22 to 7. That's his second goal of the year. Just a hard shot. And Suris not able to do much. You know who hasn't scored a goal yet this year is Kirk Pratt. A lot of face-off duties. Forty-seven is Scott Snyder. Lots of new names now for the Orange. Names of the future. Unfortunately, I don't think there's a gate among them. <laughs> Steve Bettinger is in the game. We're under five minutes to go now. There's Johnny Goodwin. Got the pick, but really didn't rub his man off of it. He Benedict to sign a defense. Ball stop before it goes over midfield. Played there by Bettinger. Good hustle to get to that ground ball. Now again, it's Robinson yeah, backing they off. They don't want to take a lot of shots. They just, I was just going to say they, they just want to keep the ball down there and run the time off the clock. But give an assist to number 32, John Barr. Mike Doyle is in the game along with Duburn Reed and 48, Dan Lannon. Landon on a Fayetteville Manliest High School. Here's Sudan. Smooth stick. Oh. And there's a goal, the second by yep. UMass in this half. Matt Palem getting beat on that play. And the goal scorer. For the University of Massachusetts, uh, number 28, Robert Falvey. 
Got it down low. And just inched it by Palum. Goal number eight. Number 28, Balvey, assist 33, Sudan. Four minutes, second left, 32, 22, UMass 80. Off the face, Gil Martin. With a nice fake. Gil Martin giving it up close to the cage. Bettinger back to Gil Martin. He gives it up for Picorni, who rolls it in. Jason Picorni scores. Second goal of the year. Now it's 23 to 8. Picorni takes a bounce shot from way out. It's a high bouncer. Goes up on Suris. Looking at some stats, I look at uh, Palem after that goal. He's got 10 saves, played a half. Started after the team came out of the dressing room. He was there in the cage to start, and he has had 10 saves and looked pretty spectacular on occasion. There's a nice spin back by Paul Cannon, rider as closest to it. 326 to go. Johnny Goodwin. Did it get in? No. No, it was on the side of the cage. And here's the outlet to Kushner. Changing his direction against Picorni. Three minutes to play. Off the stick and out of bounds of Mario Guglioni. Gippy is Matt Palem here. He had a spectacular third quarter. Nice pass. <laughs> Paul Cannon. Good win on the sideline over Runge. Gets it back. Steps out of harm's way. Spots a man upfield. Good save on the sideline, but he oh. stepped out. Yep. It was good hustle. John Barr tiptoeing along the back line. They're going after Suris there. As we come down to the two minute mark. Let's review the season here while we have the chance. Syracuse opened up here in the Dome against North Carolina. Well, that game, 14 to 9, a crowd of 8,600. St. John's was next. They fell 26 to 9, 4,200. Johns Hopkins came in. Syracuse won that game 18 to 10 before 18,000. And there was a Delphi on Long Island on the Day of Champions. Syracuse won that one 26 to 8. They beat Hofstra on the road 20 to 9, beat Hobart at home 23 to 9, 18,500. At Cornell, they got a challenge for a half and then won it 22 to 10. Went on the road at Rutgers, won that game 22 to 8, and then had to come from behind in the fourth quarter against Pennsylvania to win 15 to 12. In a minute 41 seconds, they'll have completed a perfect regular season. Of 10 and 0. Some teams have 13 games. A lot of teams will not schedule or would not schedule Syracuse. Here's Millen against Reed. If he scores, Dale, you'll have to pronounce his name. <laughs> Whoa! There's Mario Kuglia no. Last minute of the game. DeBurn Reed. 
Player from Boston, Massachusetts. Stepped out of the box. Pepe up ahead to Millen. Millen's got some nice moves. Yeah, he does. Spinning back. Here's Pepe again, checked by Reed. He goes low and wide. 37 seconds to play in this game. It's been a while since Massachusetts has defeated Syracuse in lacrosse. Last time was 1981 at Amherst. There's a goal here in the final half minute. That makes it 23 to 9. Syracuse will have their ninth straight win over Massachusetts when well, this one is completed. Matt Palin coming out of the cage. And he gets a standing ovation. Coming back from a knee surgery and showing a bit of a limp, but he played a scoreless and have a spectacular third quarter. You see him congratulate team surgeon uh, Bruce Baker. <laughs> yeah. And had that knee fixed up. Now the final seconds of the game Syracuse with possession Matt Ryder will inbound it. Under 10 seconds to go. Ryder tried to air gate route. And now time has run out. And the ball for Syracuse 23. Roy Simmons and John Desco congratulating and being congratulated by their players following the conclusion of a perfect 10 0 regular season. We'll be back to talk with both coaches and our selection of the Pepsi player of the game right after these words. The final score here in the Carrier Dome today, Syracuse 23 and the University of Massachusetts 9. Syracuse ending up at 10 and 0, UMass now at 10 and 4. And joining us now is the soon to be retiring head coach of the Minutemen, Dick Garber. Dick, uh, we certainly hope and feel your team should uh, get into the NCAA playoffs. How do you feel now about that? Well, I think we do. I think this is a real fine team. I'm, I'm sorry that uh, Syracuse really blew us out today, but uh, they played great ball. I, I said before, this is one of the, fi the finest team I've ever seen. And uh, our kids, you know, hustled hard. We didn't execute very well. Uh, but I, I think I know we're a top 10 team. I don't think there are many other in the country that much better than we are. We thought you did a, a pretty good job offensively uh, early on. It looked like your defense let Kellerman down a bit. Yeah, we've had that problem. You know, most of all our defensemen are freshmen and sophomores. And uh, all year we've been giving up a lot of shots. Uh, Teddy's done a great job in the cage, but you can't ask him to make all those saves. Well, we checked. Uh, they took uh, 68 shots, Coach. That's tough. And a lot of them are of the, uh, when the Gates or Marichek, some of them are spectacular. It's very difficult to stop some of those. Yeah, it's, 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 bot it's impossible, actually. Dick, how much has this game changed in the years you've been at the University of Massachusetts? 36 years now. <laughs> well, of course, with the advent of the plastic sticks uh, and better athletes in the game, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's gone up like 100%. Uh, the skill level, the speed, the athleticism of these guys is amazing. Uh, so from the old days when the score was 6-4 uh, to four in a great lacrosse game, and now they're 23-9 to nine and so forth. What are you going to do now that uh, when you're retired? Well, I hope to be at the university for the next three years on a part-time basis teaching. Uh, probably hit the golf course a lot more often. Well, again, we congratulate you on a, just a tremendous career, 300 wins, and we hope there's a couple of more games left for you. Well, thanks very much. It's been a real pleasure. Good luck. Thank you. Dick Garber, uh, the University of Massachusetts, real credit to this game of college lacrosse and really a, a very good team that he has here. We've said before the differences between Syracuse and apparently everybody else, and uh, UMass looks like they could hold their own against just about anybody else. And we've seen uh, Hopkins and Carolina, and I would say that they uh, they acquitted themselves very, very well. I think uh, it would be uh, difficult to keep them out of the playoffs. 
Syracuse uh, winning today 23 to 9. They will have a bye in the first round of the upcoming NCAA playoffs and uh, we'll be back here again in the NCAA tournament two weeks from today. That'll be on Sunday, May the 20th. Syracuse head coach Roy Simmons joins us now. Roy, um, before this game, we showed some of the moments in the fourth quarter of the game against Pennsylvania. We didn't have a chance to talk to you about that, but uh, your team certainly came back today from what might have been uh, a loss down at Penn. Well, uh, you know, the record books uh, put down the Penn game 15-12. That's not bad lacrosse. Win by three. Yeah, we didn't, uh, we didn't own the lead most of the game, but uh, we showed our heart, we showed our intensity, and we showed our ability to, to not quit. And, uh, you know, we had to chase the ball down there. It's, uh, we didn't play the game the way the game was intended to be played. You know, we were chasing the ball, and they took a lot of time off the clock. But uh, we uh, bridged the gap and made some adjustments in the late in the fourth period and got out of it. You, uh, th that's got to be pleasing to you because you could run into those situations in the playoffs, right? So it's, it's really good that they maybe they had that experience and they know what it's like. Well, Penn was uh, came up here last year and they lost 22 to one, and uh, they were willing to uh, do anything they could to save an embarrassment, maybe not win the ball game. I, I think they really felt good about the fact they only lost by three, and uh, I don't ever feel good about a loss. If that's the way they want to play, then uh, so be it. And they certainly uh, show all the vulnerability we had to chase the ball. I'm not too sure that uh, some of the top two, three teams in the nation would uh, take the air out of the ball uh, in front of national television. Let me ask you one thing. You had to be pleased with the showing of Matt Palum today. I thought that uh, when he came in, started him in the third quarter, I, I thought he, he made some spectacular saves there in that third quarter. Well, Matt, he's real. We know that. Uh, we think he's odds on the best goal in the nation. He's, he's had some knee problems both in 1987 and, and this year. He's undergone some serious surgery. Uh, he's obviously bounced back without a lot of practice. Uh, he's been uh, hitting the books and hitting finals. He's a graduated senior as of today. And, and he hadn't been in the fast lane where the pressure was on him with the crowd and it people point, uh, firing point blank. So we wanted him to feel good about the room here and uh, feel good about Lee and uh, knowing that Lee took over for him for a while. We wanted to start Lee. Lee did a good job. And then uh, we got Matt in, and uh, he had some of the best saves I've ever seen him have in his entire four-year career. I don't think today could have worked out any better for you. Well, I think uh, we got Matt's head uh, resolved. He's back in the game. He knows he's real again. The defense knows he's real. And... Uh, and the rest of the country are going to have to wake up and say Syracuse is now again at full strength with their, their uh, potential All-American goalie. Roy Simmons, the head coach of Syracuse, and our thanks for joining us. Completion of a perfect season here, 10-0. That's important. With the NCAA playoffs still to come. Syracuse wins it by a score of a 23-9. In just a couple of seconds, we'll be uh, talking with our Pepsi player of the game. But before we do that, Dale, while we have an opportunity here, um, is there any area in which you think Syracuse needs improvement? <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's a really hard question. I, I wouldn't say, the coaches would certainly know better than I, but uh, in terms of personnel or, or may, may, maybe doing some things that they expect, but no, they look, uh, they look excellent. The defense, which always gets overshadowed when you have guys like the Gates playing, uh, has just been, I think, spectacular. And with uh, Lee Hine coming in and having to fill in for three games, that's a real credit to him and, and the fact that uh, they rallied around him. So, uh, you know, it's real hard to find a weak spot. Okay, we're joined now by our selection as the Pepsi player of the game. No surprise, he's Paul Gate. And, Paul, I could tell you're going to be right on in this game because we listen to you singing the Canadian National Anthem. Well, I'm proud of my country, and uh, it's a great song. Uh, it's the first time we've had it here in the Dome for a lacrosse game, and I was pretty proud to hear Whose it. Whose idea was that? I really couldn't tell you. It just came on. <laughs> I thought it was a pretty classy thing to do. It was very nice. Everybody had a little trouble finding that flag at first, but when they did, everybody got into it. Oh, the fans are great here. Uh, the parents, and I'm sure they had a lot to do with it, probably some of the team members. And, uh, you know, it's a nice tribute to have in your last regular season game. Well, today you, uh, you took over the season scoring leadership from a guy named Gary Gate. Well, uh, <laughs> just uh, trying to make up for the beginning part of the season that uh, I didn't do too well in the shooting department. And the passing starting to pick up and the guys are tar starting to score. So uh, everything's starting to come together for me. We're going to look at a replay of one of your goals in which you, you threw in a one-handed shot. You got a chance to look at it while we talk about it. Yeah. Well, I had you down and you went up in the air. I probably should have passed that. Someone... <laughs> Someone probably was open, you know, but... Once I knew I, you were going to say that. <laughs> once I get one hand on it and the right hand, it's pretty tough to do anything, you know. I'm strictly left-handed. That, that was my second right-handed goal of my, my, of my whole career, so... Really? Yeah. So what about the goal that when you passed to Gary and he went through his legs? Is that one planned? 
Uh, no, I don't think that was planned. Uh, his man fell down. He was wide open middle. And you give Gary that much time, he's going to go and do something crazy. Let me tell you, I, I think Lee Hine has played very well. But when Matt came in the goal, everybody seemed to kind of pick up. It, not, not that they were down before, but he really added a lot. He made some spectacular saves there in the third quarter. Oh, you can't take any, anything away from Lee. He's a great goalie. Uh, but uh, what can I say? You saw the way Matty played. He came up with some huge saves, some one-on-one -on -one saves. You know, he, he just gives the whole defense a boost. He gives the offense a boost. You know, he gives us a ball. And now you got at least two healthy guys going into the playoffs. Before it was a little shaky, perhaps. Yeah, now we have two goalies with lots of experience. And uh, if someone gets hurt or one goes down, we're ready. What are you guys going to do with a two-week layoff here to keep your competitive edge? Well, we're going to have a game next weekend against the Iroquois national team, and uh, we're going to practice hard. We're going to have a few days off this week. You know, we haven't had a couple of days off in a row in a long time, so team's kind of ready for it, <laughs> you know, just after graduation for a lot of seniors. So um, I think we're ready for that, and then we're going to come out, and we're going to be ready to practice hard, play the Iroquois, come out, practice again, play that first round or second round playoff game. Gary, again, our congratulations, and I think we Paul. speak for Paul. <laughs> excuse me. They do look alike. Hey, that's yeah, they do right. look alike. <laughs> that's all right. I think I speak for a lot of people here and, and saying thanks for the thrills over the years. Hey, I got to thank them. You know, just them coming out shows enough, uh, enough uh, city spirit. It's great. There's our Pepsi player of the game today, Paul Gate, four goals and two assists. Syracuse is wrapped up in undefeated regular season at 10-0. They'll have a bye in the first round of the playoffs, and then... They'll be back here two weeks from today. Oh, well, we hope you enjoyed it today and uh, enjoyed another season of spectacular lacrosse, Syracuse style from Super Sports. And now speaking for Dale Drypulcher, this is Dave Cohen thanking you for joining us once again this year and reminding you this has been a presentation of Super Sports and Cook Cablevision of Syracuse.